All right, we had some baby goats born last night. Stormy had triplets and one was stillborn, but the other two are doing well. This is not any of them. These are the other goats that were born seven weeks ago. There's Koza getting a drink. And there's sweet Stormy. And her little babies are back here. Well, I don't see them now. There they are, my goodness. Yeah, now they're talking to me. There's her little babies. The little brown one, that's a little girl. And the little black one is a little boy. And Stormy, her udder is exceptionally large. So we opted to milk her out some. These babies were born... Uh, 24 hours ago and this morning we came out and they've been having a little trouble nursing just because her udder's so big so we've been milking her and that's kind of been helping to make things more accessible it's reducing the pressure so they can get a better latch but you can see her tits are really big and uh, so that's what we're doing and here's socks and you can see on socks one of, one of her one of her teats is forked, that one on the far side there. Which isn't the best trait in a dairy goat. This, this is Koza, her uh, weathered buckling. We weathered him because both of his tits were forked and that's, like I said, not a trait you want in a dairy goat. So we did that. And Anne is going to keep him as a pet. And she's been hanging out with him and that's been good for her because it worked her back into the farm. This is Sassy. She, in my opinion, is the best goat we've got. She's got a great udder, gives wonderful milk, and she gave us twins this year, and they're over there getting a drink in that bucket. And one, the all-black one, he's a little buckling. Um, somebody bought him off Craigslist, and we're just waiting on him to get weaned off, and they'll come and pick him up. And then the other one's a little doling. We haven't listed her yet, but we're confident she'll she'll get bought up quick. And of course, we got some chickens. That's a lavender Orpington chicken there. And there's a bar dog. This is a red sex one chicken. Good layers. And then we got some Easter eggers. There's an Easter egger down there. They look. They have a whole bunch of different looks to them. They're making a pretty green egg. There might be a couple more over here. Yeah, there's a couple. And let's talk about these hutches real quick. These are cool hutches. Um, they're made out of a livestock panel. This one is the milking, call it the milking hutch. When I originally built them, I made them as chicken hutches, but then my chicken plans changed. And so now we're using them mostly for the goats. You can see that other uh, funky hutch over there. It was the first one I built three or four years ago now it's been a little while and it's got some uh, PVC pipes that are bracing it and it's all uh, chicken wire underneath and it's got like four layers of tarp on it but the livestock panels are definitely the way to go in my opinion on 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 structure creating the structure for the hoop and I used a woven wire um, it's super secure it's super light um, I've seen some other folks that use a plywood or an OSB for the ends which is pretty easy. You can just stand it up there and, and trace the arch of the of, that the panel, the livestock panel makes, and cut it out with a, with a jigsaw. Um, but I wanted these to be super light so we can move them around easy. And I can move them around pretty easily by myself if I'm headed down the hill. I'll need a little helper if I'm going up the hill. But they have these wheels back here. Uh, that help and this back ends a few inches off the ground and I'll put a dolly on the other end underneath the door and uh, I can tote it around pretty easily but we're going to make another larger hutch later this year it'll be a different design but it'll be um, black yeah. panels we'll go see what these little babies are crying about it's good to see them out moving around
getting a quick snack for lunch. And these, those kids are, like I said, they're seven weeks old. They've uh, done a really good job at, uh, at weaning themselves. They eat lots of grass all day. They'll eat some feed when they're, when they've, when the nanny goats are getting some feed. So they're, uh, they're going to be good goats when it's time to wean them off. They're going to be really good goats. Let's see if we can get these guys to latch on. She is, but he is not. If you can see how big that teat is. Oh. It's enormous. And it was even bigger when we came out this morning. And he's been kind of sluggish, this guy. He'll do a little bit of work, but we can't quite tell if he's just being lazy or if it's just so difficult. Did you uh, milk her a little bit to get a nice stream flowing? Yeah. Because you know how she's thin streamed when you first start? And that'll help get the scent going on the... Help get the scent going. Yeah, and the goat will go. be there. He, now he's now he's thinking about it. Say hi to everybody on YouTube. <laughs> you big goofy. Ooh. Yeah. It's gonna give you a kiss, it looks like, huh? Alright. So we're we're very happy that Anna has bonded with this goat, but he thinks he's a cat now. So he climbs right up in your lap. He has lost all uh, he's very he's very social, I guess we'll say. Highly socialized. How are you doing, sweet storms? Hmm? How are you doing, girl? Don't chew your cud and let your babies do their job. She's had a... She's been a busy lady. And she's already... She's reduced in size. This is closer to her normal body size. She was every bit of twice that in girth uh, before the triplets came. She was enormous. And we were joking that she had like 16 babies in her, which for a goat would kind of be a stretch, but I wasn't at all surprised that three came, even though we were certainly disappointed that one didn't make it. Yeah, I know. One didn't make it, huh? But we've had Stormy for a year, and her previous owner said that she had been pretty consistent at uh, getting twins each year and we kind of tried hard to make sure that she had plenty of nutrition when she was right before she's getting bred but it might have been a little bit demanding on her to ask her for to try and make us three because she's seven years old so she's getting slightly past prime i guess now we're back all right so they moved stormy over to the milking stand and we're going to try and milk off some of that excess pressure. You need my help? What you need my help with? Getting her on the stand? Yeah, she won't go. Okay. Nibbling her shoe. I didn't believe that I was rushing them down. Some babies. No, you're trying to keep a little hair out of the jar. You're so big. Is that like alfalfa? Okay. You're a little alfalfa, huh? 
Okay, you want to wipe her down and I'll uh, do a little time back here. You want to try and wipe the cleaner? Yeah, I mean, not no. the wipes. I'm going to bring down that. So Stormy learned how to kick a lot when she's getting milk. So we tie her legs down keep her from knocking the jar to over. keep her from knocking over the good stuff. You want to both work on work on a side at a time and then we can get it done quicker. Sure. She's going to be impatient anymore. I already squeezed the first. You already figured it? Why don't I do that and you take the video? Can you do that? Okay, she, this is the side she likes to kick on a lot, really. So be careful you there. You might want to keep your hand on that jar, buddy. Yes, she will, if she can. You've got a nice tummy. I don't know how to see him. You've got a nice tummy. You're doing well. You still need a little bit to eat because you suck at trying to suck on it. You're still skinny. Oh. That's a finger. That's a finger. Yeah. Right there. Mmm, yummy. There you go. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will certainly get back to you with an update on how things are going. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon.